Hey, Broadway World TV, this is Eddie Varley. We're about to go upstairs at the new 42nd Street Studios and meet the cast of the upcoming Frost-Nixon National Tour, Stacey Keach and Alan Cox. audience in yesterday and it was the first time we were getting collective responses to to the to the piece um, and it funny enough it reminded me of my experience having watched it sure. which I'd forgotten while we'd been rehearsing it and it was this thing as you say of it being very cathartic and very um, uh, sort of profound at, a, uh, at an emotional level about ambition power and the media I got a call from my agent, and he said, you've been approached to play this part in the national tour. And I said, absolutely not. No way. I'm not going to follow in Frank Langella's footsteps. He was, he was a great Nixon. And, and then uh, I talked to my wife about it, and she said, now, wait a minute. Think about this. He said, would you turn down Hamlet or Lear or Richard say? III or the Scottish King, you know, which I've, I've played. Uh, of course. I was just going to say that you played these iconic roles and made it your own. So she, she talked me into it. She said, you know, I think, you know, and, yeah, Tony Hopkins was a great, was a great Richard Nixon. Uh, Rip Torn was a wonderful Nixon uh, back in the day. Yeah, no. uh, back in the yeah. day, you know. And, when I, and, and my dear friend Edward Jarrow has just finished doing a great Nixon in Washington, D.C. In, in, in the two-hander... Nixon and Kissinger. Um, oh yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which is a comedy. This is yeah. this is a drama. I mean, it's even though there's funny things in this. There's funny things in it. But, but, but at times a, you're almost terrified that it's funny because you know that it's true. Well, that's yeah. right. And particularly the opening, I think. You know, when before he gives his resignation speech, I had the privilege the day he resigned. I, of course, we were all getting ready to watch it on television, but I saw that live feed of the behavior before he gave the speech. Because one of my friends is, was technically hooked up to the, you know, something. So he had that we, access. Sorry. He had access to it. And I saw this footage. I couldn't believe it. I was just astounded by it. And when you saw and that footage, could you ever imagine that all these years later, the footage is probably, as an actor, in your mind, never. and that's going to be useful? Never. I never thought of it's that. It's the actor's road, right? You never know what. You never you, think you'd be playing Nixon. I never did. No, I really it. didn't. I had no idea. And what's been interesting about watching... David Frost over the years, and seeing him in his more sort of effervescent, sort of champagne Right, at a cocktail guest. A yeah, a cocktail, cocktail guest. guest. Yeah. And then seeing him in, in the interviews where he's much more direct, he seems more sort of centred, and he's really concentrated on the interaction between himself and the former president. And it's almost like you go, well, the question is, what's closer to his essential self? Is it the sort of... The, the good time. Yeah, I'm label. here. The party started. Yeah. Or, is it, yeah. or is it the person who's genuinely trying to investigate a difficult relationship with with conscience? And I think the reverberations and the resonance of this play will be will speak to a lot of people because there are many similarities between what what went on during the Watergate years and what's going on it's now. Scarily so now, isn't it? It's it amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, Vietnam and Iraq are you know it's very hard to distinguish between the same kind of problems in terms of we're stuck and admired in the situation we want to get out Certainly. of. And um, there's also the question of whether or not our current president is, is, feels the way Nixon did, and that is that, uh, the, Nick, that the president is above the law. Which is a line. Which is a line in the play. Which is a line in the play, which I think will... You know, I, I'm very excited about the fact that we're going to be in Washington right after the election. I think that's going to be very exciting. And I'm sure that being at the Kennedy Center, that many political figures will well, come I think, and see I think they're already getting their tickets. I think yeah. they've already got the seats. <laughs> every city, every theater is going to be different. And that audience, meaning America, yeah. is going to go in with all different ideas. And, and I think that there are some of the, the things that are said in the interview are so incendiary in a, in a public environment. Oh, absolutely. That I'm going to be fascinated to see if people shout back at the stage. Their autographs or, or eggs being thrown <laughs> yeah, at the stage. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Well, one thing I think Peter Morgan does brilliantly is that he doesn't he doesn't whitewash Nick. He doesn't he doesn't you know make him into a victim and or make him into uh, you know uh, a monster. 
he humanizes him. It's one of the gifts of this play. I think it is. I think it's one of the gifts. For you as an actor, right, we have to love each character we play or, you know, you have, or right. have to connect to them. That's right. And boy, what a, you know, like we're talking about Hamlet or Macbeth or these roles right, that you right. play. He is one that, it's probably good. Well, it's a feast it every is. night to get out there. Well, it is. And it, 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 it's also, it's, um, I, I have great, uh, I've developed a whole series of feelings that I never thought I would have ever had for this man. Yeah, particularly living during, with him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, particularly during the, the water key duro, because looking back, that period of time was so much the beginning of reality television for a lot of people, because, you know... Oh, that's you, so fascinating. That's so true. Yeah. And, I, and I think that one of the things that Michael Grandage is very devoted to and dedicated to is exploring how television... And, ha and how the media manipulate and control our sensibilities in terms of the way we regard political figures and celebrities. Yeah. It's, it's now rock and roll now, everything. everything. Entertainment is what, during the, um, before Hillary Clinton dropped out of right. the Democratic primaries, it was bigger than American Idol, which it, for a while, American That's Idol right. was bigger than elections. That's so right. It's, it's become entertainment. It's become everything is in us, you know. And it, you're absolutely right. And it, it, one of the lines in the play, which has a resonance, is the difference. There is no difference between show business and politics. Boy. <laughs> and that's a, that's a great button. Yeah. That's a great button. <laughs> well, here is Stacy Keach. He'll be playing Richard Nixon on the tour of Frost Nixon. Go see it because it's going to be a special pr production. I'm sure of that because this is inspired casting. Stacy Keach, thank you so much thank for you. sending a moment for the world.